yo, yo, what's good? Tyler Parker, pin drop discussions. Boom, drop the pin. All is well. What's up? Um, Friday. Today is Frank Fridays. It's the first complete week of pin drop discussions. Um, it is currently 1 o'clock in the morning. It's going to be 8 o'clock when this episode comes out. Per usual, um, in the middle of a thought, and I, I feel like I just heard God like, <laughs> I'm about to cry. I, um, you know, it's like sometimes I feel like his presence is so like just heavy, and I mean like he's just like in in the moment so like heavily that it is just like I can't ignore it and that's what make that's when I say stuff like oh I'm about to cry it's because it's like I just feel him so heavily right now and it was just like I was trying to when I was talking to him about my day and then I just like started going off on a like (laughs) it was like an ADHD moment of like just oh let me think about this let me think about this let me tell you about this let me tell you about this so I'm just you know talking to dad talking about my day Tell him about what I'm thinking about. And then um, he's like, yeah, that, that, that. I'm like, oh, crap. I thought I was just <laughs> like. So um, anyway, I've got 19% on my um, iPad here. So um, this will not be a long uh, Frank Friday. So the title of this episode is going to be called Open Book. Because it is coming from this thought. Um, The Bible is an open book. However, you can close it. But it does not mean that it is not open. Right? It has a front page and has a back page. And what I mean by when I say it's an open book, if you think like back to school, you know, it's like, oh, we've got like an open book quiz. Speaking of which, I got to do some homework because I know I probably missed an assignment tonight. Um, yo, yo, uh, just bear with me. Um, oh, I've got the, um, laundry thing going in the background. I don't know if you can hear that or not, but, um, that's what that is. If you hear that wish, wash, wish, wash. And it's, uh, Noah's, um, yeah, that's his gear. So, uh, it's been an interesting night to get back on track. So... Back in school, if you were getting ready to take a quiz and the teacher was like, oh, it's an open book exam or an open book test, it's like, yeah, that's what's up. Like, you have all the answers in front of you. However, if you did not read, if you did not study, you cannot, like, supersede the time allowed. So, you know, an open book quiz or an open book test was, like, on one or two chapters. Sometimes if the teacher was feeling, like, real... U.S. history, it might have been like three or four chapters, and you know, it's like, I mean, the answer's in there. It's an open book, open note, but if you ain't taking no notes and you ain't read the chapter, you can't sit there and read and take the test at the same time. I tried it a couple times. It worked in the early stages, but, uh, yeah, that, uh, I, I love history, and I have a decent memory when it comes to, like, dates and events and stuff like that, um, probably could have been like a historian or something but it's not what my interest was um still tracking 19 percent. okay so at any rate um yeah you can't take a quiz if you haven't read the book <laughs> like I mean it, it's gonna be really hard depending on the teacher if it's like a, anyway talking about the test and it, the bible being an open book what I mean by that is the fact that God exists outside of time. So the thought that I was having tonight um, and just kind of talking to him about was like, who the heck is Satan? Like, that was my thought. And specifically because I was thinking on Genesis chapter one and also I was thinking on um, Job. Ooh, I should probably pull the actual Bible out. I think I took it upstairs, but there's like four or five Bibles around here. Oh, perfect. Okay. Oh, man. Uh, My hands are a little uh, shaky from going to the gym today. I was carrying around around some weights and trying to uh, do some progressive load. 
training uh, to get my strength back. And I mean, it kind of worked, but still got a long way to go. So specifically where I was looking at was Genesis chapter, I believe, three. Yes, Genesis chapter three. And uh, is it three and one? Yes, three and one through six. So the serpent is talking to um, Eve, but this is the part that like really got me. First off, one point, Adam named the animals, right? Like he was sitting there naming the animals. He didn't name Eve until after the fall because his job was literally just to name the things that God brought to him, which were creatures. Eve got her name, like he called her woman, who in Hebrew is Isha, Isha, because man was Ish, which is very, uh, very, very, very interesting. And so he called her Isha, Isha, right? So she's woman. And he his job was not to like... <laughs> name her his job wasn't to make her do anything like they were created equal sin separated the equality so when people are like oh like men and women are equal you take the average man and you take the average woman i guarantee you you'll see some differences 10 out of 10 times because the average man in the world we're not talking about like so like above average woman to above to below average man to make it equal like you can't shrink the standards to make it equal and the reason why this is a problem is because for generations we've been sitting here saying like oh man and woman are equal 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 and now you have this like transgender thing with transgender in sports in sports specifically like high school olympic um sports where people are like oh they should be able to compete because they're now going by the title of whatever the opposite, whatever the sex they want to be in their mind, right? Or in their body or however it is that they describe themselves at that point. So that's not fair. <laughs> like, because men and women are not equal because of sin. Not that they weren't before, but because like the punishment, like once the punishment was said there was no there was no equality <laughs> there was an there was a social sexual hierarchy it was man then woman then serpent and then well there's like seed of seed of the woman which is jesus and that i mean i can't really go into that subject because that i'm that would be teaching something and i really don't have all the tools necessary to do that so I'm going to just push that off to the side, right? Like that is something to go ask uh, pastor, teacher, um, leader, elder. That's something to go ask them. So, um, back to the open book, right? So, I'm like, yo, the enemy didn't lie. Because <laughs> he said, yo, you won't surely die. Right? And it's like... Hold up. Because they, first off, they did not. Like, energy can't be created nor destroyed. And a soul is that, like, the soul is literally the breath of God. It comes from that energy that will not be created nor destroyed. Which is why you go to either heaven or hell. Right? And that is the eternal life. So, either way, you're going to get eternal life. It's just based off of what you believe. So... And also, like I talked about on uh, Pin Drop Discussions Conversations, it was like, so above, so it, well, as it is above, so it will be below. It's a, um, that's like a scientific law, but it's also a, uh, what do you call it? It's like a supernatural spiritual law. And you see it here, right? Like, I know, um, I've heard like a couple of Bible lessons on it and it was like, yo, how did Eve birth everything into like, she was the mother of all, so how did she bring everything into, like, manifest sin, essentially through her first seed of Cain, right? Because Cain was first born, then Abel, and then Seth, and then you got, like, the 
now you got like a bunch of families and stuff like that. But Kane was the one that like everything essentially like came through. It was the first one, right? So my thought process on that subject was is essentially the same scenario and how Jesus became sin. Like he took on our sins and became it. It's something like supernaturally divine that is available to have answered because this is an open book. <laughs> so, um, you know, so you have the Holy Spirit, you have Jesus, you pray, ask, and devote yourself into studying, um, get around people that are strongly rooted in the word of God and can lead you in the right direction in that. And I believe collectively answers will come from that that are from God so back to um the who is the serpent part or who is the enemy like the serpent didn't have a physical body until that moment because like I was thinking about it I'm like yo how is it that this is a holy like this is this is a holy place this is a construction ground that God is like bringing all this stuff together bringing the stuff to Adam and Eve, Eve was born in the garden, Adam, and then, you know, it's like, you bring, like, you bring this, this, this woman to Adam, and God didn't ask Adam, like, what she was, or who she was, like, he just, like, yo, I did this, and, he, and Adam just starts writing this poetry, the first poem, prayer, recorded in the Bible, and he's just like, yo, this is woman, she is bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh, what's up, I'm trying to see what this marriage life is about and you know get to know you and uh so they get there or to that place of familiarity and and i just mean like in relationship wise and so because this is like outside of time we have no idea of really knowing how much time passes so it's like we say like oh the enemy got up in there and was like real quick with it but in a holy place I've only seen this happen like once. And I I mean, I've, so I read through the entire Bible, listened to the audio. Um, well, listen, yeah, read through it, listen to the whole Bible on audio um, and go back. And now every now and again, and like, you know, read some verses and stuff like that. And um, I really want to get to the point where I dive more into the Bible um, and studying I think that's going to be, like, after I finish this degree. Um, I mean, I really don't know, because who knows uh, what tomorrow really holds. Um, so that's just my desire, is to, like, get a Hebrew Bible and just, like, get a Hebrew Bible, get uh, the, the, the Messianic version of the Bible, um, just, like, just go in. Like, I just want to, like, two or three, four or five months, like, that's all I want to do, is read the Bible. And that's it. I don't want to do anything else. <laughs> like, I don't want to go anywhere. I don't want to, like, no, no, no. I just, me in the Bible, just, like, right there. That's what, that's, that's my idea. And I don't think that's ever going to happen because I got kids, family, job, all that good stuff. So, wife, wife, kids, family, job. <sighs> so, um, back to the open book. This is Frank Friday. The part that really got me to ask, like, yo, who is Satan? Is because in Job, you know, it was like, hey, how'd you get in here? And Satan was like, bro, I've been walking up and down the earth to and fro. And I was like, bro, he immediately, like, just gave his whereabouts, his location. Like, God didn't already know that, you know, but it just points to this, like, yo, he knows who God is. <laughs> You know what I mean? Like, he's like, yo, I'm not playing with you. Like, I don't... He gets a little more testy as time... As as the open book that is the Word of God unfolds. Um, And I think that the boldness um, just becomes... I mean, we can look at it and see where it's at today. Um, So I can only imagine how that plays out in a spiritual realm if that makes any sense like to connect that to the as it is above so it is below like to you know if that makes any sense I hope it does um cause I don't really know any other way to explain that or express that so to close 
I have to get you the scripture on um, where that came from. So give me one second. Actually, that'll be at the end. I'll give you the, the joke reference so I can just finish this train of thought. Um, so, yeah, it's just like really confusing as to like how he has this intimate knowledge and he's like, he won't surely die. Like, clearly he manipulated the truth, which is the lie. Like, that is, that, that, like, he lied for sure. However, he used the knowledge that she had. Like, she's like, yo, I think that, you know, God said we can't eat from this tree. We can't eat from this one. And it made it seem like God was controlling to where it was like, oh, we can't do nothing but just this. And really, God was like, yo, you can eat from whatever one you want. You know, however, this one in the middle, don't do it. Because it's like God had a plan for it. And his plan is unfrustratable. So it's like, I think he just really wanted to see what was going to happen. Like, I see God, like, with a lab coat on. And it's just like, let's see what's going to happen here. <laughs> Like, obviously, he's not human. He's not a man that he should lie. He's a spirit. So he wouldn't have a lab coat just so that is very clear. Um, but in my mind, like, to paint a picture for myself, it's like, okay, why? Because if you would destroy the earth with, like, multiple people and, you know, in uh, the story of Noah and, you know, you get to the uh, Passover and a bunch of these, like, Egyptians die, um, and the children, the first born children died. And like all these things happen. It's like, why not just start over with two people? It's just like, <laughs> like just, it's just one, two right there. Boom, that's it. Start over. But I think like the beauty in God's creation is like he will take a messy thing and turn it into something beautiful. And it's like he didn't even really have to do anything because it's like it's already done. <laughs> it's like I said it was good. So it is. <laughs> That's that's what I hear from him, you know. So it's just like, all right, shoot, he just God said, let it play out. <laughs> God said, let it roll. He said, let it. He said, let him eat. And I mean, I guess he's talking about, you know, man and woman. So they they ate, and now now we have all the events of today's society and world. And you know, I think that people have this idea that God does nothing you know i know where um in some uh belief systems there is a a notion of do what thou want to do what you want to and really it's like a really bad american thing you know um I, and this is another thought that i had today was just like we kind of americanized this whole idea about life you know what I mean? It's like, oh, if you can't do it this way, then that's not, you know, that's not for you. That's not, that's not the way that it should be. And, you know, it's like everybody should do it this way because that's how life is. And when I say it's Americanized, it's because like on foreign soil or on, in foreign soil, it's like we're able to kind of have this safety or sense of safety because one, there's an established agreement because we are a superpower um, that we just have this, like, we bring that way of life with us, you know what I mean? So it's like within the territory and the boundaries that we're able to live the way that we want to, we love it, you know, we glorify it, we praise it because it's like, oh, I can live how I want to over here. And it's a beautiful thing. However, there's a whole culture, there's a whole society, there's a whole different mindset, a whole different mentality of people uh, that operate differently on the other side of that. But it's just like, as long as this is expanding, <laughs> as long as the way that I want to live is increasing, then I'm not really worried about it. And I think about the, the whole, like, be fruitful and multiply in that sense, because it's like now whatever idea is the strongest multiplies and that idea creates a sense of safety and security that may may or may not be what we're supposed to be doing just like <laughs> i mean i sometimes just worry about us as a people because it, it just seems like we do get more and more selfish and especially for myself sometimes i'm just like if it's not the way that i want it to be and i have to check myself 
and it's not easy because sometimes I miss it until something happens and I'm like, oh, okay, aha moment. I see the crap that I was doing. I'm so sorry. Um, and it just goes from there, right? Like the education, the the um, the unlearning of behaviors, it starts a process and process is much like training. There are difficult days. There are days when you default and go back to the prior training. But it's like, you know, if you're trying to break a habit, it's a lot harder than just establishing a new one. Like, I know the 21 days to form a habit is a thing. There was a, the rule of, what is it, the rule of 15 minutes or something like that. You spend 15 minutes on something a day or a year. Like, every day of the year, you'll be an expert or throw it better than, like, 95 or 97% of the world in that thing that you're doing. Um, there's the, you know, there's that, that logic behind it. But there's also, like it's a it's it's double sided because as you're replacing something it's like are you replacing it or are you covering it up right so there's a deeper dig there's always a deeper dive that's required when we're walking this thing out um when we're journeying and trying to essentially be better right like i feel like everybody's trying to be better they're just trying to do it their way that's I won't say most comfortable, but this is like that's most sustainable because we're, we're looking for sustainability. Excuse me. So back to this being an open book, I feel like we have the ability to go to the word of God at any point in time. Open it up like you can open up the book in Isaiah and be like, oh, I see this happening right now. And I, I'm like, yo, I. <laughs> That's why I had a, a really hard time with people saying, like, the second coming of Christ. Or this, like, they'd be like, oh, he's coming, he's coming, he's coming. It's like, you know, there is, in, uh, what is it, in Joshua chapter chapter 1, um, it's like verses 1 through, or no, verses like 5 through, where is it, Joshua chapter 5? I can't remember. I'm going to have to go back and get that one, too. But within the first, like, I had posted it on Facebook a while back. And it was just like, yo, Jesus was, like, present in that time. Like, he was literally, like, right, like, right, right, right there. So, you know, we get really comfortable with the word coming as it's, as it feels like. It's like, oh, we have no idea when it will be because it's in the future. Not, like, if you think about it, if you would have told the disciples... And if somebody just went back in time somehow, you did a back to the future, just like somebody from today, right now, went to Peter in the Bible. It was like, hey, yo, bro, we're going to be driving in a car and you can go down the street. You can go 13 miles down the road and you can get there in 13 minutes, depending on traffic. If you're in traffic, and like Peter would be looking at you like, bro, wait, what is traffic? <laughs> what is a car? What are you talking about? So I think because we judge situations by based off of where we are currently located and where we want to be, sometimes we miss the idea of now and the conception, like the, I said conception, the whole like concept of what it means to be in now. Like, you know, I know Eckhart Tolle has a book, it's like The Power of Now, um, mindfulness, like people are like really into that stuff and like being in the moment. And the moment is literally, like, fleeting. It's really, really... Like, if you really concentrate, it's really hard to be in a nap moment. If you really concentrate. Because it's like, how do you catch now? How do you catch it? Like, that moment that I was just saying now is, is now in the past. And it's only been, like, five seconds. Five, ten seconds. So it's just, like, it's really hard to be in... A moment to where we can say, you know what? Comfortably, I know where I'm at. And even more so in this open book that is the word of God. Because it's like, okay, I see all these things happening. Boom, boom, boom. All right, well, it's coming soon. And coming soon could be like already here. <laughs> like it could be 
and I think that's I don't I don't know how to I don't know how else to say that. Um, you just don't want that moment to happen, honestly. Like I I don't. Like, as I'm saying it out loud, I'm like I don't want to be in a place to where I'm living like he's coming and he's here now and I miss it because I'm so focused on coming that I miss now. Yeah. Uh, wow. Um, yeah, so that's it for Frank Friday. I think I uh, touched on all the points. I got to get the scripture from Job. Um, the chapter in Genesis I'm reading from, or read from, was Genesis chapter 3. I mean, really, the Bible is an open book. Grab it, read it, uh, pray. You know, read read the Bible with the Holy Spirit. Like, he is, the, he is here to just walk with you, talk with you. Like, <laughs> he's real. Um, he's really, 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 really real. And he's really, really, really beautiful and amazing. Um, Yahweh is great as always and forever will be. Yeshua is just full of love and grace and mercy and I'm grateful because I know there'd be moments when I go throughout my day or sometimes I, I just like black out and I'm just like oh yeah I did not talk to you today. I didn't pray. I didn't like, sometimes I'll pray and not talk to him. And I know I, like, had a moment on one of the episodes where I was just like, you know, prayer is like a conversation. There's sometimes, that for me, there's a difference in, like, conversation as me praying for somebody else. And, like I was describing earlier, just, like, talking to him. Like, there's, there's a difference. Like, talking to him like he's, like, right here. And I know that could possibly, like, if you say that in the wrong environment, it could get you checked into a mental, 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 mental institution um, because of the cultural climate and the mental health crisis and all of that stuff is real. Um, so you just have to be, like, really, really mindful uh, and, you know, <laughs> just be like, I'm, I'm in reality. I just understand that he is also my reality. So some of it, like, it's really a conversation by faith that I'm having. So you might not have to understand what it is that I'm saying because you don't have to have the same level of faith that I have to have to talk to him like he's standing right beside me, like right now. And also understanding he's standing beside you too. That is, that it, it's, I get it. I just can't say that to everybody. <laughs> so, um... Yeah, man, just get really comfortable with the uncomfortable. Um, I know that was, like, a thing that I wanted to say um, before. I know I said something about, like, dismantling the whole, like, idea of the cultural... What is it? Not cultural, but the socially charged words. And really, it's not really dismantling. I, I really want to build upon, like, people's thoughts. Like, like yeah... In a certain sense, I just want to, like, tear down some of the walls that are up. Because, I mean, like, everybody's on guard, like, and I get it. Like, we have to be, like, because we don't know what's really out here and out there. And, you know, the brain, which I absolutely love, is so complex that you have to protect it. You know, you, you have to. And you have to protect your space and everybody has boundaries and everybody has, you know, what, I mean, they've got a personal theology. Everybody has a personal, like, doctoral statement that governs their, um, themselves, um, and they have to adjust, we have to adjust based on where we're at and not be lawless. We have to be people of the law that operate and understand and cannot be careless and tactless and emotionless and also can't be nonchalant about things I'm talking to myself on that one so uh, Frank Friday 30 minutes good God that was not what I was supposed to be doing <laughs> um so I really want to put the scriptures I was talking about in the comments, but 
if I say that, I might not do it. So give me one second. I will wrap up. Let me go ahead and play some music for you real quick, and I'll be right back. It's the same music that I've already put. Actually, maybe I can give you something different. Hold on, let me see. What we got? Uh, chick, 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 chick. Files. Let's see. Uh, and how many seconds do I need? Y'all let me know. I made some of these. I told you I made, um, made a couple beats. Let me see. Mm, let's go with the largest file. The sunshine, lo-fi sunshine. I don't know if there's anything wrong with lo-fi or not. I mean, it it helps me study sometimes. So hopefully this helps. If it's something that is not helpful, please let me know. Feedback. <laughs> Okay, back. So the scripture that I was looking for in Job says that it is Job chapter 1 verses uh, 7 through, actually, sorry, Job 1, 6 through 8. So, um... Sure. I will read it. The Lord, and this is in, what is this in? This is in uh, NIV. The Lord said to Satan, where have you come from? Satan answered the Lord, from roaming through the earth and going back and forth in it. Then the Lord said to Satan, have you considered my servant Job? There is no one on earth like him. He is blameless and upright, a man who fears God and and shuns evil. And the specific part that I was talking about was the part where Satan said that he was roaming the earth, through the earth, going back and forth. And which is very interesting because it's like he's been roaming the earth, so he's just like going around. He doesn't really have a plan. He's just like going up and down. He's just like, huh, who can I, who can I mess with? 
You? Mm-hmm. Okay. And he said, hey, God's like, have you considered my servant Job? God is just like, yo, I got, I got a good one right here. Job. And it's not because the enemy, like, it's not because he knew Job would, like, like have those moments of, like, doubt and concern and stuff like that. And I believe that it's like he saw, like, because God reads our hearts. And I believe, like, he knew all of those details and what outweighed, you know, those moments of I guess depression and sadness and grief was the end product of, you know, just understanding like one, the depth and the depth of the relationship that was developed um, just from that trial and that circumstance. And two, like showing the enemy exactly who he was, you know, it's like, I, I don't have to, like, I don't have to do what you, what you think that I have to do over, like, I don't have to, control people i don't have to manipulate people i don't like that i believe you know that's why we sing songs just like you know um he loved us first is he doesn't make us love him back you know what i mean like he doesn't say like oh you have to love me you have to you know do this you have to it's like no we do these things because we we when when we get to a place that where we understand that loving him is literally the greatest thing that we can do for ourselves. Like, even if you have, if you look at it from a, like, a selfish perspective, you know what I mean? Like, it's, it's literally the best thing you can do for yourself. Like, that is the only way that you can really get to a place to where it's like, yo, now I can see everything differently. <laughs> like, you know, it, it's, it, it's mind boggling because man, we were studying um, altruism and um, social psychology and I made the like the argument that I felt like it's really hard to be altruistic, you know, because we have needs and wants and if you can really live outside, like if you're a monk or somebody that's like detached from literally everything and everyone for years, then I think it's possible to be altruistic. But outside of that, you know, I think that it's really hard to be in a place to where you don't consider at least one thing, like, for yourself. Like, to be like, mm. you know, like, even if it's something good that you can give God the credit and glory for, it, that still technically has a little bit to do with you. Like, I mean, it's not that you're going to beat your chest and be like, yo, I'm, you know, like, it's not that you're going to get prideful about it. It's just something that adds to the depth of your relationship and I don't I don't think there's anything that's wrong with that. Like I think that just develops like character and as the relationship grows between like us and God, like I feel like, you know, those hard places, those ugly places kinda get refined over time. So I mean I, I think, you know, it's like the coal that becomes gold or something or not gold or diamond or something like that. It's just a process. Um, so the second scripture I'm going to go ahead and give to you and then that's going to be it. And this is the longest podcast I've ever done. Just straight talking, like not an interview like this is different. All right. Play, play music. So in Joshua chapter uh, chapter 5 13 through 15 I would like to start at the 12th verse and this is the King James version and the manna ceased on the morrow after they had eaten of the old corn of the land neither had the children of Israel manna any more but they did eat of the fruit of the land of Canaan that year 13 and it came to pass when Joshua was by Jericho that he lifted up his eyes and looked and behold, there stood a man over against him with his sword drawn in his hand. 
And Joshua went unto him and said unto him, Art thou for us, for us, or for our adversaries? 14. And he said, Nay, but as captain of the host of the Lord, I am now come. And Joshua fell on his face to the earth and did worship and said unto him, What saith my Lord unto his servant? And the captain of the Lord's host said unto Joshua, Loose thy shoe from off thy foot, for the place whereon thou standest is holy. And Joshua did so. First off, there is no angel. There's not a single one that would ever allow themselves to be worshipped knowing God. So there was a question um, that was asked. And it was like, well, how can you be the captain of the Lord's army and be the Lord? Well, if you're the commander and you lead the charge in battle, you can be the captain of the army. Like, you can be the host of the army. Like, you are, if you are the, you can be both. <laughs> so, that was my thought. Um, and the part that it said that he was a man, I was just like, yo, this, Jesus. But, you know, it's just my interpretation. Um, I don't know what anybody else is saying or not saying. Um, I don't even, I, I don't even focus on that anymore. Um, yeah, because it's Joshua 5, 13 through 15. So it's, it's, it, that's King James Version. Uh, there's, I really like the translation and new messianic version in the Bible app because, uh, yeah, it lays it out. <laughs> and, um, I don't know if I said, if I owed you another one or not, but um, if I did, feedback, hit me up, let me know, because I don't really want to be on the podcast any more than 45 minutes, oh my goodness, that's, that's, that is a lot, that is a lot, that is a long time for a monologue, um, or a journal entry, so it's been a long journal entry, uh, appreciate you guys for rocking with me, uh, I saw, I had another five listens. I was like, yo, this is the most, like, these last three days have been the most consistent that I've seen pin drop numbers. Like, I mean, like, there was, uh, I think when I started doing it in, like, 2015 that, you know, it's like, over a period of time, it would be, like, five here, six here, you know, it's like, but there would be, like, days and gaps in between and stuff like that. Um, and then there would be like, you know, when I started doing like the interviews and stuff, there was, um, like more people to listen to like YouTubes and different like platforms and stuff like that. But like, as far as just coming back and just kind of like restarting and just getting back into it, this is the most consistent that I've seen numbers on like each and every day. And I'm just like, yeah, I'm grateful, thankful, um, cause it means at least you're downloading them. And I, I love it. I love it and appreciate it. Um, yeah, that's all I, that's all I got. Um, the washing machine stopped. It's 1.30 in the morning. Got to finish some dishes and uh, read a textbook. So, love y'all. Be easy. And uh, enjoy your enjoy your Friday. Peace.